Welcome back to John's Films. Have you ever wondered how much power your computer is using while you're rendering your videos? Well, today we find out. We're going to test two different projects and we'll try rendering in both the CPU and in the GPU to see if there's a cost difference between rendering in those two. The first project we'll use is my benchmarking of my 3950X that dropped last week. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And we'll use some tools to get this done. We have the Thermaltake Power Supply Monitoring Utility. I'll put that up here on the right. We're going to use the NZXT for system load. This is NZXT's CAM software. It's a monitoring software, which also configures, in, in my case, for the Kraken Z73, configures what it's showing at any given time. We'll also use Windows Regular Task Manager. Uh, you can click on the Performance tab and see what each of the cores of your CPU are doing, as well as the other components in your system. Right now with the screen capture, it's operating out of the GPU. The last thing that's kind of interesting is more of a check your work thing, and that is my Sense Power Monitor that I've installed in the house. If you haven't seen one of these, you install it in your breaker box, and it uses the electrical draw signals to identify throughout the house the different items or devices that are pulling power. Um, it does that based on their power draw signature, and it's pretty slick. It can give you a great breakdown of every bit of spend in your house over the day, week, month, year, and by component. So if you look back, here's when the dryer's been run this week, and for uh, how many kilowatt hours it's used, as well as the runtime. So let's check out the meter, and this is what we're going to use. And we can watch the power spike and the draw, and the house is mostly asleep right now, which is why the draw is down, but it'll be coming up as I do the rendering. So now we'll jump over to the standard render. This render is being done in the GPU, it's H.265 on the 2080 Ti. And when I click start render, yeah, yeah, it's run before. Jump over, first we can confirm that it is operating in the GPU as it jumped up to a spike of 99% utilization. My power load, you saw it was at 345 there a second ago. And we can monitor this now over time. The wattage is still holding around 280 to 300 watts. And if we go over to our Sense system, let's see, looks like it is right around 900 watts, whereas previously uh, we had been rendering a lot higher than that. I don't know if maybe the heater kicked on in the house or something right there, but we can see it's not really causing a, an overall bump in the house, and I think this is... Now that I'm seeing this, this is probably going to be the story of this video, is that it's not inconsequential, but it is um, a minor cost when it comes to the rendering, at least with the GPU and the power draw that it's creating. And our render is complete, and we notice that it's dropped back down to about 200 watts. So for me, what I'm seeing is when I'm rendering in the GPU, it's about a 100 watt penalty for the duration of that render. Now let's render in our CPU. This is going to be interesting because it takes longer. Um, theoretically, it is a better output. Um, there we go, we'll update the job. Theoretically, it's a better output, more accurate. However, um, some testing I've done, you can click above with the Netflix render quality engine. Shows me that it's really not that much different than what NVIDIA creates when they create it out of their dedicated encoder. All right, now we've got that kicked off. Let's ensure one, it's running in the cores of the CPU. There we go, we can see our CPUs standing back up. I can hear the fans in my system ramping up, which tells me, sure, something's happening. <laughs> and if we look over here, sure enough, um, man, this NZXT cam software makes me wonder. I've, I've looked at this before and never seen this much of a difference. So we're at 66% here, whereas Cam thinks we're around 50. It's fun. Now you'll notice even here, we're not utilizing all the cores of my CPU. Even though I told it, you know, Resolve go crazy, use the whole CPU. That's a Resolve decision, and it appears we've got maybe 16, maybe it's only the physical cores working. It's tough to tell because you've got a physical and then a, a simultaneous multi-threading core, uh, which is a virtual core. Uh, running. So let's go take a look at the Thermaltake power. Wow! 
All right, so we're up over 400 watts there for a second. Uh, it looks like just initial blush. We're down now in 200, but we never saw the GPU draw get up that high. Um, this is a more efficient G CPU than I previously had in here. This is a, I think it's a, what is it, 90 watt T TDP or 105 watt TDP versus the Threadripper, which was 180. Yeah, this is definitely drawing more power. So if we learn anything here, we're learning that you draw more power when you render in your CPU than when you render in your GPU. Let's see if that's been enough to notice here in the Sense system. Tough again, it's across the entire house, but there's a chance that's where I kicked it off right there uh, because we've continued to see this spike that correlates with the spike previously. So what did we learn there? Well, we learned for sure <laughs> CPU rendering is more painful. And that's going to lead me to why I built this video. My buddy Sadi was doing a lot of fusion renders, and they were taking him um, 16, 18, 20 hours to render. And it was some particle stuff. And I ran it for him, and it took a couple hours on my hardware. So let's see exactly. He wanted to know how much was that going to cost for him to continue to do those renders that long. So that was fusion particle systems. Let's jump to that. Here's some of Sadi's work. Uh, interesting to me, he taught me a while back, um, you can copy and paste your node graph out of the settings file and just paste it in and boom, here we are, um, which is pretty cool. It's been a good way to send node graphs around between us as we work on stuff. So here we go, I've got the particle rendering that he's got going on and you'll notice it's Pretty darn painful. I click play and I've got nothing going on here on the 28 Ti and the 3950X. Effectively what he's got here is some a background with some merges going on of emitters for particles and these are small nodes, big nodes. These are small particles, big particles. He's put some care, uh, he's put some interesting look around some of them. Um, really creative guy, does some good work. I'll have a link in the description to his work at Gargoyles at Work. Great source for free backgrounds, and he gives all his stuff away. He's um, a little crazy. We now have what we want to render here in the timeline and test. And so I'm going to just jump into my delivery tab. I'm going to set an in-out range. In here, out here. And again, we're going to do the same rendering test. This one's back in the GPU, and this one's in the CPU. Here I've set up that node graph to render with the fusion composition. It's rendering in the GPU, and you can see all of a sudden the pain starts to get created as we've got an hour render time already. Let's see if we get a bump in there since. That's not where I clicked it to start. Uh, looks like it's not really hitting that much power. Let's see, thermal take. Yeah, it's about the same as what we were using before. No big deal. In ZXD, I don't really trust you anymore, so we're going to go over to our Windows monitoring tools. Here it looks like the CPU has taken a large hit, even though I specified the encoding to happen in the GPU. And in fact, you can see here the GPU is doing very little work. All it's doing is encoding the final video, but the CPU is still doing all the work. And this is a good learning for us in Fusion. This is why a higher clocked CPU, um, while it doesn't look like a multi-core CPU, is really going to help as much as we would want. But a higher clock would help better in Fusion because it looks like it is still not that optimized for its work. Um, we've got a five hour render time. Obviously, we're not going to stick around for that. But now we do understand exactly what's happening when we're rendering. And it's not really drawing that much more power. But it looks like it's going to be a, a turtle instead of a rabbit when we're talking about getting this done. It'll crank along, looks like six or so cores being utilized, and it'll crank along with those six cores, um, drawing not too much power with a little bit of encoding being done in the GPU. Now we're gonna kick off that same render in the CPU and see how much pain that brings. Here we go, and we'll load up our node graph here. Again, you see the render spiking pretty quickly, going up to, right now, around four hours. Looks like 
from a GPU perspective, the only work we're doing is still OBS, although this is interesting, it's now picked up some 3D work. I uh, don't know that that's directly attributed to Resolve, but it's an odd thing to see. And finally, our power consumption is also right around 250 to 300 watts. So what we seem to be learning with Fusion is it doesn't matter how you go about it, it's primarily going to render in the CPU either way, and therefore it's going to have about the same power consumption. So Saudi, there's not a way to cut it down, and it will draw an extra 80 to 100 watts for the duration of your render. In this case, it looks like it's around 8 hours, most likely. So there we go. What can we conclude out of all of this? Well, first, each of the renders takes about an extra 100 watts from what we've seen. When rendering in native mode, we saw higher spikes, um, up to almost 2x what the GPU was using, but on average, both of them draw about 100 watts extra to do a render. And so that's just going to be 100 watts power draw times the duration of your render, which means to me, the faster you can get your render done, the better. So if you can render faster out of your NVIDIA hardware encoder or your AMD hardware encoder on your graphics card, do that. If your CPU is faster than what you can render out of your graphics card, do that. Um, if you're on the free version of Resolve, it should be noted you don't have the option to render out of your GPU. And so you're going to be on your CPU no matter what. If those renders are taking a long time, maybe it's worth an upgrade for you. Who knows? All right, so thanks for watching. I know it's a rambling video, but it's something that I thought was kind of cool and a great idea by Saad. As always, like and subscribe so others can find this video, and have a great day.